uh, the food industry has to face in protecting the food due to its deteriorating effects on food quality. So basically lipid oxidation is a process where lipids uh, react with oxygen leading to the formation of uh, lipid hydroperoxides, also known as the primary oxidation compounds. So these initial products are colorless, tasteless and odorless. However, they further decompose uh, with time, uh, temperature or action of enzymes to low molecular weight compounds that are responsible for rancid flavors and odors. And in addition, oxidation of lipids may play a direct role in the development of chronic diseases in the human body. So the major food quality issues influenced by lipid oxidation include uh, a decreased nutritional quality, an increased toxicity, uh, the development of, of odors, and an altered uh, texture and color. So in order to tackle this problem, we can work on two approaches, either by avoiding oxygen inside the product, so with oxygen ab absorbers, for example, as I said before, or by adding antioxidant compounds in the food product and or into the packaging materials or also coated onto the packaging material, which is the refugot uh, strategy that I will explain afterwards. And so we can find two different antioxidant compounds, primary or chain breaking antioxidants that retard the radical chain reaction by avoiding the propagation or initiation of radicals by hydrogen atom transfer to radicals. And most primary antioxidants are phenolic antioxidants uh, obtained from plants, but we also have uh, the rosemary extract or essential oil. And then secondary antioxidants can act by different mechanisms, such as uh, regenerating primary antioxidants, chelating metals, uh, giving acid acidic pH to the matrix, thus increasing the primary antioxidant effectiveness, effectiveness and scavenging oxygen. Uh, ascorbic acid and its uh, derivatives are part of these secondary antioxidants and they are especially effective when the oxygen is the main cause of oxidation. So in Iris, next slide, please, Maria. Katarina, could you move the slide, please? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, so in EDIS, we already have a background in antioxidant coatings. And as an example, I will speak a bit about Olifa that used extract obtained from olive waste waters and contain 80% of uh, hydroxytyrosol, which is a type of polyphenols found in olive leaves and oil with a high antioxidant activity. So the polyphenol coatings uh, in this case led to improved food quality attributes during storage in comparison with a non-active packaging and especially a decrease in the oxidation values of the two food products uh, tested that were meat burgers and gouda cheese and besides polyphenol extract can also act as an antimicrobial agent So to develop both uh, the active uh, liquid solutions and dried coatings, we need to achieve several parameters and find the right balance between a homogeneous coating solution with an appropriate viscosity to obtain, to obtain a uniform coating, a good adhesion to the chosen substrate, an appropriate concentration of the active compound to obtain the antioxidant effects on the target food, uh, we also need a sustained release profile of the active, a coating stability, of course, during the storage, and a feasible wet coating application for industrial use. So now in the Refugode project, the two selected food products for the antioxidant coatings are potato chips and breadcrumbs that are both affected by oxidation mechanism during the storage. We are using uh, biopolyethylene as a bio-based film to apply the coating. And as for the coating itself, we chose to use a sodium alginate as a, as a bio-based polymer 
and different active compounds uh, which are encapsulated rosemary oil, BHT and the olifa polyphenols that I just talked about. So we chose to work uh, with encapsulated essential oils since uh, Apex, so that manufactures the potato chips, had already worked with this particular essential oil and there was a strong re resulting taste of the chips that was not appreciated by the panelists. And besides the encapsulation, uh, permits to control the release of the active compound and extend its action during the food storage. And it is, of course, approved for food contact. So at laboratory scale, uh, when finally optimizing the active coatings in terms of homogeneity, adhesion onto the biopolyethylene, antioxidant capacity, etc., we will start the shelf life study of the food products. So we need to package the food by following several steps. So first we need to treat the biopolyethylene sheets with the plasma to make it uh, hydrophilic. Then we apply the coating with a 12 micrometer rod coater. We let it dry. We prepare small bags with the coated bioplastic, uh, package the food and seal the bags, and then uh, store it uh, either at room temperature or 40 degrees Celsius for accelerated aging. And afterwards, we will test different parameters during uh, around four months. So one of the most important parameters is, is uh, the lipid oxidation that we will study through different analytical techniques depending on the food. And we will also measure the moisture content and the organoleptic properties like uh, visual appearance, crispiness, and odor. So in conclusion, uh, the best of the three different active coatings tested will be the one showing both the highest decrease in lipid oxidation values and the best accepted product by the panelists in terms of uh, organoleptic properties and the food shelf life will be extended, resulting in a greater food safety and less economic losses due to the food storage. Okay, thank you very much, Justine. Um, uh, well, now I'm going to speak a little bit about the part of antimicrobial coatings that we have been uh, developing in, in RepoCoat. Um, so, uh, uh, okay, in this case, as I already introduced uh, Justine, uh, the antimicrobial coating, what aims in principle, no, in, in, the, in a big picture, is to increase self, self life. Okay, and it's useful uh, for uh, food products that, that are very prone to microorganism uh, proliferation. So, in the case of Refocode, we have followed two different strategies. On one hand, we have uh, been working on, on this uh, general concept about uh, active coatings, no, that is increase of self life, in which we have been working with different active substances, but at the end, we have selected to go to the final trials with a, a specific one that is Lauroil arginate ethyl. That is the one that I, I introduced there. And then we have follow a second strategy that is more related to food safety. Okay, in this case, uh, we can say that they are uh, two complementary strategies. In one hand, we, we aim to increase safe life, and in other hand, what we are trying is to incorporate some active substances, in this case, bacteriophages, to uh, fight against some uh, uh, harmful microorganisms. I will now show a little bit more about this. So we will start with the first one. Uh, in this case, as I said, um, the objective is to um, contribute to the decrease or uh, uh, yes, the, the, the speed no, of microorganism uh, uh, development, okay, and uh, in order to increase self life and contribute to uh, reduce uh, food waste. So we have been working with uh, an active substance that is a uh, life that has this structure that is shown over here, and what we have done is incorporated both into the film by um, a roller coater and also into the trays by using a spray coating. This substance has been chosen because it is a known substance uh, as a preservative in meat products. But as uh, to the best of our knowledge, it was not uh, uh, been used before uh, as active uh, substance in, in packaging. Okay, incorporated them in the in the package for for this kind of, of product. So we have been testing it by incorporating into the into the package. Uh, next slide, please. So what we did was uh, first uh, 
uh, define different deck scenarios. So we started incorporating uh, the active substance in both uh, the bottom of the tray and also the, the top lid. And uh, after these first trials, we have uh, ended up with a trace of breadfruit code by incorporating a lie in the, in the food trays and also in the lid of, uh, of the bio-based or biodegradable, in this case, uh, material that have been developed in breadfruit code. So at the right, I saw some of the results belonging to the first trials, okay, because uh, the ones uh, with the final trace are, are still uh, on their go, uh, but uh, what we can see is that um, uh, compared with the control sample, that is the one that do not have the, the lie, we can see that uh, we slow down the, the, the uh, microorganism evolu uh, 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 growth. Okay, we have followed both enterobacteria and also aerobic microbiota. And what we can also say is that, um, as expected, because of the way of action of this uh, substance, um, the uh, activity or the yeah the antimicrobial activity is greater when we incorporate it both into the top layer but also into the into the tray. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, the second uh, um, strategy is, is related to food safety and what we have to employ is bacteriophages. Okay, in this case uh, we are talking about food safety because we are going to focus on some pathogens such as Salmonella. In, uh, it's true that um, within a meat product, you, you can have different pathogens, okay? So the uh, Salmonella, Campylobacter, Listeria, I mean, you can, you can have different. So at the moment we have been working with Salmonella, but uh, knowing that uh, if we uh, want this to work, uh, it's very probably that we have to combine different bacteriophages to, to make a proper, a proper antimicrobial substance in this, in this case. Okay, so in, uh, we are uh, talking about food safety because this kind of pathogens such as salmonella are related with uh, some illness that uh, may even cause death. So it's a, a huge concern within in the food industry mm -hmm. to uh, be sure that we uh, do not have this kind of pathogen. Okay, so uh, please, uh, next slide. So what we have uh, used or, or in, in Refuco that is something very innovative is the use of bacteriophages. A bacteriophage is a virus that can infect bacteria. And what is very, very interesting about bacteriophages is that they are abundant and they are also very, very selective. That means that they are harmless to, human, uh, to humans. Okay, I will show you now a small video about how does the, the bacteriophages work. Uh, a bacteriophage is, um, as seen here is a, a virus that is, uh, has a, a head and a core and uh, some uh, legs with a needle. So I, I'm not seeing the, the video working. I don't know if you can. Bacteriophages. They look like spaceships from another world, but are most fearsome killing machines. Fortunately, they leave us humans alone and target exclusively bacteria. Phages stick to their prey with leg-like fibers which trigger their shaft to run a needle into the bacterial hull. This punctures the envelope and injects the genetic material contained within the head, an ichthyohedral capsid made of proteins. Okay, so um, as said, uh the important thing about bacteriophages is that they are very selective. That means that a bacteriophage that uh, can attach or detect Salmonella will not affect, for example, Campylobacter on the way around. And this is the same with any other bacteria or any other cell. So that's why they are not harmful and they are um, useful for uh, affecting or attacking a, a, a single kind of, of bacteria that may cause these this food safety problems. So what we have done in, in refu code, uh, next slide please. Bacteriophages. Uh, is to incorporate them in a food trays. Okay, in this case we have incorporated them uh, through the absorbing paths because a problem with bacteriophages is that uh, they are uh, living, uh, they are alive, so uh, they can be affected for, by high temperatures, no, when applying the as a coating. So, uh, we should be able, or we in the future uh, might think about exploring different strategies, but at this point we were more concerned about um, 
trying to um, detect or, or uh, yes, to the day if, if they are really working on, on this kind of food products. So we have incorporated them in, in the food trays and we have performed some uh, experiments to see effectivity. As I said, the strategy is different. So also the way of evaluating them is also different. In the first case, what we what we did, you know, with lie is to uh, study the evolution of the the microorganisms within the food uh, within the meat within the chicken. But in this case, what we have to do is to inoculate uh, Salmonella to the chicken, and to uh, then follow if the bacteriophages are able to kill or not the the Salmonella. And what we can see is that uh, in the blue line we have the control sample without um, bacteriophages and um, we have the red uh, line with bacteriophages. So what we can see is that effectively the bacteriophages can act uh, by uh, decreasing the, the counts of salmonella that initially were incorporated. So this is a very promising result that uh, makes us think that it is a, a very useful strategy to fight uh, again uh, this kind of, of bacteria. So just to conclude, next slide. Just some conclusions. Uh, as uh, Justin said, the active packaging uh, can help to extend cell life and also contribute to safety, uh, to safety while keeping the quality of the product. In Refugold, we have been working with two different of active substances. On one hand, antioxidants uh, for chips and breadcrumbs and on the other side, antimicrobials in the case of chicken. So uh, antioxidants have been explained by, by Justin. Justin, and, and what uh, we have at the moment are some expected results. No, we have still running these experiments, but uh, we expect that um, uh, we have some decreased lipid oxidation values in comparison with the control uh, packages. And also we can cons uh, keep or improve the organolectic properties of the food products. In the case of the antimicrobial coatings, we have followed two different strategies. In the first one, we have used lye. In this case, uh, we have been able to, to see an effect and we think it's a, a good option in order to try to increase cell life for, for packaged chicken. And in the case of bacteriophages, uh, we have just uh, checked uh, the effectivity of uh, bacteriophages against salmonella and we uh, co can conclude that it's a promising strategy to uh, prevent the proliferation of this kind of pathogen. And well, that's all. Thank you very much.